We all have those teammates when playing victim that are dead 20 seconds into the match when in turn ends up making the games more difficult. And let me tell you, when I first started playing the game and others had tons of more experience than me, it used to be the same for me being on the receiving side of it. Today, I wanted to present my most helpful tips to get you on the other side of those exit gates. And these are great strategies that can help you in and out of each lobby. And I want to just say that this is regardless of ranks. This works in most lobbies. I want to label this first part stealthy versus stamina but there are certain times and i learned this playing family from the victim side that you can make quick escapes through gaps or crawl spaces where players continue to run instead of making quick decisions to find a hiding spot let me tell you that experienced family members understand that they don't have all the time in the world to look for you if you find a decent hiding spot where you can make a quick getaway from this can mean at times you staying alive or headed back to the main menu. Now disclosure, this does not mean hide for five minutes and expect your team to do the heavy lifting. This also does not mean it's going to work 100% of the time, but you wouldn't believe how easily you can get away with it considering a couple factors here. Number one, the family member has to take a guess where you might have ran to. Only Cook and Johnny have the ability to track where your next movements are, and this takes time for them to track. They cannot follow and track at the same time. So if we're under that speculation, when family members lose sight of you, this is your advantage to find a decent spot to kill their time. Number two, as I play most of the game on killer, I realize more and more that I know very little information about what the other victims are doing. Unlocking doors, powering off batteries, distracting my team, whatever. The grand scheme of it is, playing as victim, assuming the experience of family to be decent, they understand that as well. Any wasted time could mean everyone escaping. If the stealthy part fails, run your ass off. <laughs> but no, to be completely honest here, you don't want to be stealthy all the time. And you also don't want to be running heavy with stamina all the time. There is a fine line of each. And the more you are aware of your surroundings, the less of a hole you'll have to dig yourself out of. Worst case, you can learn this, hop into another lobby, or you can waste a good amount of the family's time. And even if you do get caught, assuming you have a bit of health, you can make your way to a well to start over from the basement. Let me tell you guys my next sequence. That is so important, and I learned this within my last 30 to 40 hours. Apply pressure. There is multiple strategies for escaping. There are exits with batteries, generators, fuse boxes, valve exits, give or take a minimum of four different escape spots on each and every map. Sometimes five like the gas station. Do not use your precious time opening one door and saying, oh well, if it works out or not. There is three family members on the map. Two can be patrolling the exit gates with the battery side and the other one protecting the generator side while the other is chasing you. Also, it's great to understand that you have teammates. One exit gate open at times can be great for you, but what about the other people in the lobby that A, doesn't know where you are without voice chat, or B, made it so easy for the family to just camp and watch over? There are so many times when I'm pressuring a battery exit and one of the family members comes over and patrols that gate for a good three minutes, and I'm stuck in that old timey showdown waiting for them to leave. Sure, it excuses my last point about wasting time, but you gotta understand if that killer is just standing there waiting, they more than likely don't feel pressure enough to move from that spot. Pressure the valve, push the family to move in your favor and then run to the battery exit and run out. If they don't get to it in time, boom, your team just got an extra way to escape that match. Not to mention, if the family recognizes a pattern of your exit strategy, they are more likely to set up around these areas, including traps, padlocks, or just patrolling those areas. Be mindful of that. And it works so well. It has given me so many escape streaks just applying this method. This is an important one too. Stalling, or wasting time. More specifically, know the family member you are being chased by. Stalling is a great technique used in most asymmetrical horror games. It draws the killer or killers to focus on you while your team applies the pressure like we talked about before. My favorite technique against Leatherface, I kid you not. As you may know, up to this point, family members have different roles themselves. Johnny and Cook can kick crawl spaces to close them. Sissy and Hitchhiker can vault through crawl spaces and gaps, while Leatherface can close crawl spaces, thrust through gaps, and also break vaulting barriers. All this time, and I still don't know what those stupid things are called. So for instance, if you're being chased by Leatherface, you should know his kryptonite. Same with Hitchhiker, same with Johnny, same with Cook, and same with Sissy. Leatherface has extremely heavy hits, can one-shot most victims as you tear him up. He is extremely weak around gaps and crawl spaces. Bringing Leatherface around these areas forces Leatherface to either destroy or run around. This is a perfect example of stalling. Just dragging his attention away from running around and chasing your teammates, you can buy that time in safe areas for your team to open basement doors or get unlocked tools, all together set up for the start middle points of the game. In games like asymmetrical games, it is very important because every second matters. Decision making is a part of the game, that's why skill experience is so important. I have done this at times where all three members are chasing me and it gives my team enough time to open basement doors or exit gates which warrant a lot of the times easy escapes. Self explanatory but work as a team. This isn't COD Warzone where it's every man for themselves. This is a team game after all. You might feel by yourself from your own point of view, but there are three other teammates working with you to get out of every 
every match. If you're a Leland gamer and you see your team getting smacked around by the family, go lay the ass out. Same goes for door stuns, which are super effective, by the way, in slowing down the family. Also, what comes to mind is close encounters when you have a bone scrap in your hand. This can mean saving a teammate. I don't think a lot of players even know that you can heal others with a potion, which is crazy to me. But help your team out to get out those exit gates and it'll warrant you a lot more escapes. And I'm glad I mentioned health potions because that is my last point. Because they are your best friend. This is another important point that has helped me. Once the victims go up to the top, family members spend the majority of their time patrolling unlocked doors, feeding grandpa blood, or even trapping areas to lure you into. I see this mistake time and time again where newer players will jump down a well and run back up to try again, and not setting up for themselves before re-encountering the family. Once you fall back downstairs from the top ground, this is your time to heal up to full Get some unlock tools and bone scraps to jump right back into battle. Blows my mind because in most encounters with this, the victim dies shortly after. Don't forget that this isn't a time game. You are not rushed to escape. Take that time to fully set up yourself before making another attempt to escape from the family. The real reason I made this video was because there is a role for each and every player in all of these types of asymmetrical horror games, and each role, whether it's the distraction or the heavy lifting of opening doors and opening exit gates, there is real strategy to winning games in all senses. If you play your cards right and learn from your mistakes and take your experience to a whole new level, you can be on the other side of those exit gates. Game after game after game after game. After all this though, what do you guys think? Did I miss anything for experienced players to teach the newer players of TCM? Let me know what you guys think, and if you enjoy, please do let me know by leaving a like and a comment to let me know you enjoyed the video. Without further ado, my name is Waldo, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.